Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, August 5th, 2023. To declare a state of emergency as a situation has emerged where it has become difficult to control this unacceptable movement under current law. The threat the activity is imposing on national security and public peace is increasing day by day. That's Ethiopia. I never saw that one on the geopolitical structure. <laughs> Holy moly. Protests there. Oh my God. Uh, Let's just get into the uh, the news for just a bit. I'll, I'll start with um, some of my tweets here recently. So today, uh, it, was, it was huge. I thought this was a huge development, but I don't see anybody reporting on it. But uh, Russia launched uh, missile strikes into western Ukraine from Belarus. Well, you say, well, okay, they've been launching missile strikes all the time. But no, no, not from Belarus. So does this mean that... Belarus is now part of the uh, the war on the United States Empire? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, but I just thought that was very interesting. And uh, this is the escalating ladder as the Duran. Now, by the way, watch the Duran. They are awesome uh, on YouTube and, uh, of course, on Rumble and Rockfin. And there. I wish I could post on all of those. <laughs> I only have so much time to make these videos. That's, that's why these tools are right here. I... Uh, we're, by the way, we're gonna we're gonna cut to some videos. I know this is gonna be a weird video. You're gonna be like, "What the hell is going on here?" But uh, I was out working in the yard all day yesterday, and then I came in, and of course I had pulled up my collard greens, and uh, I had no idea. I tell you what, women, all you women out there, uh, my mom cooked for me for my whole life. I've never learned how to cook, and to to cook up collard greens uh, from a garden, it took me till four in the morning. <laughs> That's why I'm just now making a video or, or I just, I'm just kind of like lounging around the house at this point, but I never knew how much work it was. I mean, you got to cut them stems out. Anyway, we'll get, well, I, I, fact, let's watch the first video of me making collard greens. So in my videos, I always try to teach you about prepping and self-sufficiency and everything else. And so I know this is going to be a weird clip in this video. Uh, as you can see, I had to kind of wash all the dishes, even though I have a dishwasher. But uh, sometimes uh, when you have a pan like this, you, I mean, I, I'm hesitant to put that in there. And if I'm going to wash the pan, I just go ahead and just do them all. These are fresh pulled peppers from the garden. Some of them are a bit overripe. I've been trying to keep up with it. And then, uh, so we're cooking uh, collard greens. These are fresh collard greens pulled from the garden. And I'm working on the recipe. Let's show, let me show you what we got. We got some bacon down in here. And then I threw in just a touch of Worcestershire sauce. And then, of course, uh, I put in some um, uh, onion uh, salad dressing because it keeps a hell of a lot longer than an onion. I'm just a single dude. And uh, so I just put a little bit of that uh, salad dressing in there. We're going to mix in some garlic, uh, the peppers. And you can see uh, these collard greens, <laughs> maybe I left them in the garden a little too long. I'm not really good at all this. But, uh, you know, the, 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 the problem is that I, that I was watching the video on how to cook these. It was, uh, they look pristine, man. They're all totally green and everything. These things are like drooping all over the place. Of course, they sat out in the yard while I was working on cutting and trimming the bushes. I live in a retirement community. I have to keep the house in order. Let's get to cooking the collard greens. So I have an abundance of peppers, <laughs> so I'm trying not to get too crazy with the peppers. I'm just trying to use them up. So what we're going to do now, fresh garlic, of course, is what you want. But I'm just a single dude, and you can see this expired back in uh, 20, 2012. <laughs> but you know what? It's been in a cool, dry place. Uh, this is some Cajun, Cajun stuff, uh, so we're going to throw that in there. And, uh, and then, by the way, the way you want to do these is you have to cut the core out of the collard greens because uh, I guess that's kind of bitter according to what I'm seeing on YouTube I'm not an expert I'm just making adding this in and then uh, of course I'll be trimming off all of the bad portions of the leaves and then uh, you, they said don't wash them until you're done cutting them up tell you what if you want to enter into a project like this I suggest you have a TV nearby <laughs> 
because <laughs> this is one hell of a long project just to cook some damn collard greens. But very quickly, <clears throat> what you do is you roll up the leaves, uh, kind of like a cigar or making a homemade uh, marijuana. And, uh, and then you just slice it up. That's what I saw on the video. Now, what you want to do first is cut the core out of these. And I will do that, but I wanted to get this on the video while I was thinking about it. Now, down in here, I've added the garlic, the Cajun powder, and the peppers. Okay, so we'll, we'll get more into that collard green project. Because, you know, that's the, I don't want my channel to just be about geopolitics. I'm trying to teach you. Uh, all the skills that you're going to need in the coming financial crisis and the uh, uh, the destruction of the world. Uh, let's just pray it doesn't go geothermal nuclear. So let's uh, let's keep going. By the way, that uh, that missile strike from Belarus was in retaliation for a uh, drone that hit a Russian ship in the Black Sea. So you can kind of see the escalation ladder to the escalation ladder. Here's another one. Uh, let's get into some financial stuff here. Uh, because I was, uh, I've had people ask me, you know, okay, well, you, you talk doom and gloom as uh, uh, the Canadian prepper. I love that guy. <laughs> he cracks me up. I, I tell you what, I can't promote his channel enough. Check him out, the Canadian prepper. I think, well, on, on X, he's called Prepper Canadian. I don't know why. I guess he couldn't get Canadian prepper on there. Maybe somebody else had captured that uh, title. But uh, so they were asking me, you know, what what should we be doing, that cybersecurity guy? What should we be doing? And I said, well, number one is to de-dollar into asset. Now, assets can take on many forms. Uh, I don't think that real estate is a good place to be. I do think that we are going to experience a stock market crash. So do you want to be buying stocks right now? No, I, I wouldn't recommend it at all. But, but, but the world needs commodities. No matter what, I don't care, you know, well, if other than nuclear, global thermonuclear war, commodities are going to do well in any environment, okay? And so I, I'm, I'm going to throw out a bunch more ticker symbols for you. I may just even put these, well, never mind. So let's get into my advice here. I said D-dollar into assets, uh, precious metals, oil, uranium, commodities, the world needs. And of course, pay down your debt. Uh, now is not the time to be going out to eat or going on lavish vacations or uh, buying that new wardrobe, uh, that new suit. I mean, unless you got to have it for a job, you know. So what I'm saying is take every penny you got, pay off your debts and, and diversify into commodities. Definitely get out of any stock that's not commodity related. I can't give advice on this channel. OK, this is just what I'm doing. OK, this is what I'm doing. All right, because uh, I, I, YouTube will knock me right off. But these, these are the things that I think might benefit you. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong, man. Maybe you're going to lose every penny like I will. Uh, so anyway, uh, then I say uh, sell non-asset related stocks. And that's, what, uh, and that's what getting into the commodities would be. And then uh, re reduce exposure to medium to long-term bonds and CDs. Uh, right now, uh, what I'm doing. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm buying uh, one-year CDs. Uh, you might say, well, you're losing money with inflation. Why are you going to hold on to a one-year CD? Well, you got to have liquidity somewhere. Okay, you can't just take every penny you got and put it into gold, silver, and platinum. You know, that, then if you, you enter into a liquidity problem, like uh, your hot water heater explodes or, or your house catches on fire, you know, what do you, what do you, how are you going to pay for the hotel room? Put it on your credit cards and then pay 28% interest? No, you've got to have liquidity somewhere. And so what I'm saying to, to that I'm doing, okay, you could buy short-term treasuries. Now, are treasuries going to uh, basically become worthless? Yes, of course they will. Is it going to happen overnight? I don't think so. So I'm just trying to tell you where you can park your cash, where you're, you're, not, going to, you're not going to beat inflation. You're losing money no matter which way you go. But you got to park your money. You can't let it sit in a, a savings account making 0.01% interest because then you're losing everything. At least with the, uh, a one-year CD, I think uh, Navy Federal Credit Union's paying upwards of about 4.6% right now. Inflation's running, well, I want to say about 15%. So at least you're offsetting that loss by a little bit. And then, of course, uh, CDs, you know, by the way, and you want to buy some bonds, you can buy bonds that are, are short term. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll give you a bit of a payoff. Uh, and, that, and I say do this where liquidity is necessary. We all have to have liquidity in our lives. Otherwise, if there's a crisis or something happens, 
uh, you end up in the hospital or whatever, and you got to have access to that money. Uh, now, is, is, is a CD tied up for a year? Yes, it is. You can still liquidate it. You're just going to take a loss. Okay, you're taking a loss anyway with inflation. So let's get to the next uh, reply. Uh, this was one uh, I had some people, they were looking for me. I said, where are, where are all your videos at? And I said, I'm that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. I said, but the algorithm <laughs> hates me. They got me so buried. If you search on that cybersecurity guy on YouTube, you won't even find me. I mean, I don't even exist. And so I told them what you can do is if you go to my X profile, that cybersec guy, that cybersec guy, X, okay, I don't want to call it Twitter. I keep in my brain wanting to call it Twitter. I, my link to my YouTube channel is right there on there. And I'm hoping that uh, X, by the way, uh, Elon, uh, I hope you will add so that I can add other links because I'd like you to, to, to visit my channel on Rumble, which is The Burn. Okay, so that's where you're going to find me. You're not going to find me if you search for me. Now, it used to be if you Googled that cybersecurity guy, you might be able to bring up one of my videos and you could subscribe to my channel that way. But I don't think even that works anymore. I think even Google now is, uh, well, they, they found out that, you know, of course they own YouTube, so they're all part of the same machine. Let's see, um, Moscow issues update on Ukrainian casualties during counteroffensive. Kiev has lost over 43,000 troops since it's launched its push against Russian positions in June, the defense ministry reported. And then, of course, I posted my, my post saying basically the same thing. So, whatever. Uh, this I boy, I, this is great. I mean, these people that put out these memes and stuff. I'll I'll just read it to you. U.S. war hawk John Bolton claims that Donald Trump would almost certainly withdraw the U.S. from NATO. Well, that that'd be a great thing. <laughs> I would love to see that. But uh, I, I'm not sure that Trump would do that. But anyway, if he is elected, I guess he's trying to scare all the neocons or the. Uh, uh, conservatives that feel like we need to be fighting in Ukraine. I don't understand that, but I, I think we need to take care of people here in the United States. But um, if Trump makes this official, he may win. Americans don't want sick neocons like Bolton and Newton spending trillions to murder people in faraway lands. And then, of course, they put this up. I thought this is great. Look at his mustache. Can you see that? I wish I was this creative. I'm not, you know, I'm not. And uh, but anyway, I thought war with his mustache. I thought that was cool. Uh, this is another meme, uh, declaration of memes. I tell you, if you don't follow them on uh, X, uh, they get um, they get some really good. And they were replying to the Liberty Project, and uh, and it says, "Mom, I'm scared. I don't want to go to war. Honey, quit being selfish. I don't like the president of Russia." <laughs> <laughs> it's got this it's got this picture check that out oh my god anyway so but if you didn't know uh ukraine is conscripting people off of the streets and uh, uh it's horrible to watch a lot of these young people or well they're getting to be old now at this point old and super young going to the war front to die i still got my my uh I poll up uh, right now. I said, who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline? The United States, 60%. Russia, 20%. Norway, 20%. So uh, we'll see. That's got two hours and 51 minutes left. I don't think that's going to change. Um, uh, this was one that, uh, well, what was it? What's the doctor's name? Simon? I can't remember his last name. Anyway, I was replying to him and I said, after being kicked off of YouTube twice for trying to talk about mRNA vaccines. Uh, let me test the new X. <laughs> so, hey, YouTube, you censoring fools. Oh, yeah, this is uh, interesting. Now that Africa is in play, we have a new con new front to the confrontation between Russia and NATO. The Middle East, specifically Saudi Arabia and Russia, have finally worked out agreements on cutting oil production that comes as the United States has depleted its oil reserves. So that's, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, so expect your oil prices to rise. Uh, that was a point that I made there. Let's see. That was me with YouTube. Ah, oh, this was interesting. According to the Russian Ministry of Defense, Shogu, yeah, I already said that they lost 40, 43,000 troops. Let me keep on going. Uh, this is the one, the Senegalese, Senegalese government has announced today that it will send military forces to support any kind of armed intervention led by the ECOWAS 
against Niger. The ECOWAS is the uh, African uh, alignment against uh, the uh, Russia supporting countries. Um, so it's uh, it's getting uh, pretty divisive in, in Africa. I'm, I, I, I'm expecting war to break out there any moment, but uh, we'll see what happens. I uh, mean, this 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 adds to that. Putin has reopened the Russian embassy in Burkina Faso for the first time in 31 years. You know what? Let's just pause right here and let's watch another clip of me making collard greens. Just wanted to show this. I'm cutting out the core of each leaf, and, uh, and then of course we'll roll them up and cut them up. Okay, this whole home uh, gardening thing. <laughs> That's what's. Months of work on my collard greens. That's the whole pile. Isn't that amazing? And of course when I cook it, it's going to be down to nothing But uh, anyway, I cut all the hearts out and uh, I tell you what if you can't watch a movie or just put the TV on or listen to the radio uh, This is tough work, man. I've been at this for hours. Let's keep going So I wanted you to see this before things really get crazy here Now I put the peppers in there and that's with the bacon and we got to get that bacon fried up until it's nice and crispy and uh, if you look over here of course i've still got some collard greens right there these are the ones now look how dirty that water is and uh and i did cut them up at, as the person advised on youtube uh, before i washed them so now i've, I've got them in the in the, the cauldron here uh they're soaking in the water I'm, I'm i'm getting all the dirt off of them and once that bacon is crispy Let's look down in there with all the peppers. Man, look at all them peppers. This thing's going to be awesome. All right, let's keep going. So that was uh, that's me continuing to work on the collard greens. Uh, let's get into some replies because this, this video is getting way too long. Uh, Elon, uh, Elon Musk AOC. I, I don't know if that's Elon or not, but I tell you what, they're funny as hell. So I follow them and... Uh, they put out a, a, a post about Hunter Biden, and I said, I bet partying with Hunter Biden in my youth, my young delinquent days would have been epic. <laughs> I mean, my God, can you imagine partying with Hunter Biden when you're a young delinquent? Oh, my goodness. Uh, and, of course, this was one I was talking about. I put out a post talking about all the people that had betrayed Trump, and, uh, of course, everybody kept... It keeps sending me other people that betrayed him, and so I guess I'm just going to have to do a new post <laughs> and talk about all the people that betrayed him. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, he put these people in. Well, yes and no. I mean, think about it. He was just a civilian coming into a swamp. He didn't know who to trust or who not to trust. I mean, my God. I mean, Mike Pompeo, uh, uh, Bolton. I mean, you don't know. I mean, I... I, a lot of those people, I kind of looked at back in the day and thought, well, you know what, they, maybe they, they'd be okay in the Trump administration. Well, no, they weren't, obviously. And so, um, anyway, we'll probably get down to that uh, reply and talk about the people that betrayed Trump. Um, and this, this was one, uh, these people were trolling me, and I just wanted to, 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 to say, you know, because they were talking bad about Trump. And I said, look, man, I said, the globalists want us all to starve into the abyss so they can rule unopposed. Do you understand that? That's what's taking place. I refuse to accept that fate as life under their rule would have no meaning. We have lost our way and faith in God's plan for the world will triumph. Getting there will be painful, but that's life's journey before we die. So those, you know, just trying to be philosophical for a minute. Every now and then you got to get off the, the beating the war drum or talking about Ukraine. Uh, well, let's watch another video of me making collard greens. Okay, so the bacon is ready. Now I put a little bit of basil. You do what you want. I might have added just a touch of oregano. A little bit of butter in there. Uh, some more peppers. And uh, the bacon is ready. So now we are ready to put the collard greens in. So now I've added some collard greens. And I also had some spinach laying around. I added that to the mix. And we're going to put in some apple cider vinegar. And some chicken broth. Now that everything is in, we let it cook on a slow simmer for 45 minutes. Of course, with the lid on. Ah, wasn't that cool? All right, so let's get to, um, yeah, the Lincoln Project. <laughs> I, I, I sent them a tweet. I said, just admit that everyone at the Lincoln Project is a Democrat. You know, I mean, there's nobody there that's a Republican. They just pretend. Uh, anyway, um, 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, once again, I sent Elon another message uh, saying my follower account stays the same, and I keep getting people following me. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know. I think I'm shadow banned on Twitter. Certainly am on YouTube. Rumble, I don't get much following there, but I don't know. That's because Rumble, I mean, unless you're a big name, it's kind of hard to get any attention there. I don't think they're shadow banning me, though. I don't, I, I'm don't. i pretty sure Rumble is, is totally free speech. I, I do have confidence there. Yeah, Mike Pence's presidential ambition continues to crash and burn, and I replied, we all just want the traitorous Pence to just go away and retire to an, a remote island somewhere. <laughs> don't you? I mean, don't, I, I just, I, what's the point? I mean, you know, him and Chris, Chris oh, by the way, Chris Christie, I got a good one on that if I make it down there. Yeah, well, this was, uh, this was one um, uh, clandestine. After observing the left-wing echo chambers, uh, there's a less enthusiasm of the newest Trump indictments. And I said, I hope you're right about Trump propaganda failing, but I don't see it. I listen to, um, I don't know, I mean, I, as much as I hate him, well, I shouldn't say I hate him. I do, he just parrots the same old thing, Sean Hannity. But, I mean, when I'm out hiking, I just kind of turn on the radio and, I don't know, I'm not much of a music person, although occasionally I listen to rock and roll when I'm hiking, but uh, mainly I just listen to talk radio, whoever it might be. I like Todd Stearns, and um, well, I like Dana. She's pretty good. But anyway, uh, all that talk, let's see, you won't even know that we are, oh, yeah, and that's another thing. They never talk about the war with Russia. All they talk about, everybody wants to talk about is Trump, Trump, Trump. I'm sick of it, you know, as much as I want Trump to win the election. Yeah, this was uh, Simon Goddick. That's that's who it was. He says, lately there's been a growing number of voices telling me to stop publicly calling out those who discriminate against the unvaccinated. But let me make it clear, no, I won't stop. Exposing these zealots is nothing less than an honorable community service. And so I agreed with him. Yes, indeed, never stop. Oh, this was a cute one. Nancy Pelosi claims that Donald Trump looked like a scared puppy in the D.C. courtroom. Has Nancy been drinking again? What a disgrace. And then I said, at least Nancy's, uh, Nancy Pelosi's eyebrows have come down <laughs> after her plastic surgery. <laughs> oh, this is another one. Uh, this was uh, uh, that idiot Blinken. The uh, U.S. is suspending funding for a number of foreign aid programs related to Niger. U.S. Secretary of Blinken said, but my reply... Oh, this was, uh, this was somebody. I thought this was very nice. You are right about the algorithm, by the way. You can't even find your channel. <laughs> Send me a link to your videos, please. I said, go to my profile on X. The link is there. Yeah, of course, I list. Well, I, let's just list the people that I put in my first tweet. Because like I said, I got to add to this list. Mike Pompeo, for example. But just look at Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, John Bolton, Mark Milley, Anthony Fauci, Bill Barr, James Comey, Christopher Bay, James Clapper, Bill Burns, Cr Chris Christie, Ron DeSantis, Mitch McConnell, Mittens Romney, and the list goes on and on. That's what I was saying. So, you know, I didn't know it wasn't mean, meant to, to be uh, uh, the, the be all and end all. Yeah, and then, of course, I was uh, replying to somebody because they were saying, uh, uh, they were talking about the Democrats, and I said, zombies never resign from Democrat totalitarian authority. Just look at John Fetterman. <laughs> Pennsylvania elected a dead man and a zombie. Oh my God, what the hell's wrong with Pennsylvania? Uh, and then, of course, Poland is preparing to close the border with Belarus due to fear of Wagner PMC. This was stated by Deputy Foreign Minister, Minister Pavel Jablonski. Uh, and then, of course, I said, I'm sure Belarus cares about Poland closing the border <laughs> with Poland. <laughs> On the contrary, they probably welcome it. I mean, they probably feel a lot safer with that border closed, in my opinion. And then this was one that Ukraine will lose $2 billion due to Russia's withdrawal from the grain deal. This assessment was given by the head of the Department of Monetary Policy and Economic Analysis of the National Bank country of Vladimir Lepuensky. Uh, and then, of course, it goes on. I said, don't worry. The United States Empire will print more fake currency <laughs> to make up for Ukraine losses. All right. That's it for this video. Peace out. Oh, wait. Jeez. Ah, I forgot about the damn investment. See, if you waited to the end, you're going to get some good information. That's why you should watch all of my videos all the way to the end. So this is the last of the list of things that I've looked at. This is just what I'm doing. This is not financial advice. You will lose all your money. So P-A-A-S, P-A-A-S, that's Pan American Silver Corporation. 
uh, probably a pretty good investment uh, with less risk than, than some. Uh, SII, SII, that's Sprott Incorporated. So you're actually investing in the company that owns all of the Sprott ETFs. And we're going to get into those ticker symbols here in a bit. TSLVF, TSLVF, that's Tier 1 Silver Incorporated. Uh, UROY, U-R-O-Y, U-R-O-Y, Uranium Royalty Corporation. You've got VIP, RF, uh, VIP, RF, that's Silver Viper Minerals. Uh, that's, uh, uh, it's speculative, but I think it's less speculative than most of the ticker symbols that I give you that I'm investing in. WTHVF, WTHVF, very, very speculative. Uh, you'll lose all your money there for sure. West Haven Gold Corporation. And then ZCTSF, ZCTSF, you'll definitely lose your money. This is very speculative. That's Zacata Tech, Z-A-C-A-T-E-C-A-S, Zacata Silver Corporation. Uh, now, these are the ones that are much more stable that I'm, uh, that I'm invested in. Um, so, but you know, you, it, it, it's kind of like going to the roulette table, right? I mean, if you bet black and gold or black and um, red, you know, you, you got a 50-50 chance. Uh, so with these, you know, you have better than 50% chance, whereas the ones I was just listing, for the most part, you've got less than 50% chance. But you could hit the big one, you know, when you bet on number 13 and boom, it hits, uh, you make a ton of money. So you got CEF. CEF, that's Sprott Physical Gold. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, right now, I, good time to buy. I, gold still hovering right below 2000 on the spot price. Um, you've got GDX. GDX, that's Vanek Gold Miners ETF. Um, done real well there. Uh, and I, I do think that has a bright future. Now, when the stock market crashes, are all these going to lose money? Yes, of course, they will. And people have to sell off in a stock market crash. Uh, you got O-U-N-Z, that's a bit more speculative. O-U-N-Z, that's Vanek Merrick Gold ETF. Now, we've got, uh, now this is the one that, that I've got most, a lot of money in, okay? And, and I'm not just telling you what I'm doing. You got PSLV, that's Sprott Physical Silver. And then you've got uh, PSLV. So S-E-T-M, S-E-T-M, that's Sprott Energy Transition uh, Minerals. Um, so that's like lithium, uh, you know, all the things that we're trying to do to, to, to develop the green economy. And then you've got URNM, and I've been telling everybody to invest in uranium, especially if uh, uh, Niger wins the war. Uh, the, the West is going to be cut off from a lot of their uranium supply, so, uh, or some of it anyway. Uh, so that's, uh, that's URNM, that's the Sprott Uranium Miners ETF. Uh, right, at last I looked, uh, silver was at 24 and platinum was at 928. There you go. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar. That Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, sooner or later God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later God's gonna cut you down.